Hey, future respiratory therapist. So got a request to break down and clarify um, chest drainage systems or what some of us just refer to as chest tube drainage systems and what they look like and the differences in what they are and how to troubleshoot them and understand what you're looking at, okay? So this is a concept that for respiratory therapy students can be challenging to grasp. And then post-graduation, it can be challenging to, uh, to hold on to, to retain this information because in a lot of facilities, unless you make a conscious effort to look at your chest drainage system and utilize it and, 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 and ask yourself, what is this telling me about my patient? For the most part, from what I've seen, there's not a whole lot of facilities around uh, the country here where RTs are in, in charge of managing the chest drainage system. So it makes it hard to, to learn a concept, but then don't manage it and to retain the knowledge. And so today's video hopefully will prepare you for your upcoming test that you're going to be take, taking that are going to address this. Your TMC exam will address chest drainage systems and expect you to know how to troubleshoot them. So I'm going to break it down for you as simplistically as I uh, typically try to do. Okay, so here we go. Understanding when you're talking about chest drainage systems, they break down into three different categories. You can have a one bottle system, a two bottle system, or a three bottle system. Now, for modern day practice in most places, they're using um, you know plastic disposable um, three bottle uh, drainage systems, either the Pluravac or the Dry Seal system or whatever it might be. Okay, uh, and we'll talk about that when we get to the three bottle because it still operates on the same principles okay but for now we're just going to break down the difference in these three okay so the first one up here is the one bottle system and really what you need to know about the one bottle system is this okay the collection chamber and the water seal chamber are combined now let me talk about what those two words mean okay because you're going to see them repeated throughout all three of these okay the collection chamber is the chamber that collects pleural fluid as it drains from the pleural cavity. Okay, the water seal chamber serves as a um, a seal so that when the patient inhales, the diaphragm drops, intrathoracic pressure decreases, and since you have a tube coming out of your pleural system because intrathoracic and intrapleural pressure decreases, then air could be drawn back into the pleural space if it wasn't for this water seal chamber. Okay, so you have to understand that first of all. That's the purpose of the water seal. If you just put a chest tube in and you leave it open to atmosphere, every time the patient takes a breath, you're going to draw air into the pleural space. You're basically going to create a pneumothorax. Okay, so the water seal prevents that. The water seal in all three of these should be two centimeters below water. Okay, and that's important because that's going to uh, help us troubleshoot the one bottle system here in just a second to remember that. Okay, now also note that there is no suction chamber or suction control chamber in the one bottle system. It's just collection and water seal in a single bottle open to atmosphere okay you can't control suction in a one bottle system and so you typically wouldn't apply suction to a one bottle system okay so here we go what do you need to know and how do you troubleshoot the one bottle system well since the water seal and the collection chamber are combined if you have a patient who has a large amount of of pleural discharge and fluid or or maybe it's a hemothorax and they're putting out a lot of blood into the chest drainage system you need to understand that the water seal depth which is supposed to be two centimeters is going to increase is going to get progressively deeper and if you ever have a large amount of output into your one bottle system that raises the fluid in this system then your water seal is now further beneath the surface of the fluid and this can impose an increased work of breathing onto your patient. 
And so, so if you ever uh, come across that question, you know, you're, you're, you're taking care of a patient being treated for a large pleural effusion. Uh, minutes after the nurse uh, turns the patient, you have a large amount of fluid collected in the single bottle system and your patient suddenly appears with an increased work of breathing and tachypnic and 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 in respiratory distress then what do you need to do well the answer is is you need to separate the one bottle into a two bottle or maybe a three bottle system so the answer is change to a two or three bottle system okay that's the only problem that you can find with the one bottle system okay now the other thing you know about the one bottle system and this is true for all three of them is that if you have bubbles coming out of the single bottle, which is the collection and the water seal chamber, that air indicates either one, a pneumothorax, so air being evacuated from the pleural space, or an active leak in the parenchyma. So maybe you don't have a collection of air, so you can't call it a pneumothorax, but maybe you have a recovering pneumothorax and an air leak at the parenchyma level, and on exhalation you're seeing this air expelled out down through the drainage system and as it passes through the water it will present with bubbles okay so bubbling in your water seal is always a sign of either a pneumothorax or a leak an active leak causing air to be evacuated through the system okay now the two bottle system is just that it takes the one bottle system and separates out the collection chamber from the water seal so now any discharge or any pleural fluid that is evacuated will drop into the collection chamber, but the work of breathing is all still related to the water seal chamber. Okay? So, increasing of fluid in bottle one, which is the collection chamber, will not change the depth of the water seal. And so, you won't have an imposed work of breathing due to a collection of fluid okay there is no suction chamber so again you're going to have two bottles the first one coming from the patient is going to be collection chamber the second one is going to be water seal and then it's going to be the atmosphere because there is no suction control chamber okay so that's what you need to know the only thing to really troubleshoot on this is is that if you see air coming out through the water seal again you know you're looking at a pneumothorax or an active air leak from the lung parenchyma, okay? Exiting out on exhalation and um, coming through the water seal as bubbles, okay? Air through water all the time equals bubbles. So when you see bubbles, you need to think air. Where is this air coming from? Most likely coming from an active leak in your patient, okay? Now, the third bottle <clears throat> gets a little more complicated, okay? Because you understand the one bottle, we've separated out, now we have patient, collection chamber, water seal chamber, and now we're going to add a third bottle, which is going to be your suction control chamber. Okay, now the suction control chamber is added to allow you to add suction to your chest drainage system. This is important because some cases, such as an empyema or a very large pleural effusion or, or other circumstances where you need to apply a suction, this is what makes it possible. And what it does is it regulates the amount of suction that actually reaches your patient. Okay, So you can have the wall suction on negative 100 centimeters of water pressure. But because of your suction control chamber, that will be downregulated to provide whatever you have that setting at. So there's a vent tube in the suction control chamber that vents out excessive suctioning. That tube should be submerged. It's open to atmosphere, but it should be submerged into the suction control chamber. 20 centimeters of water pressure and however far it is submerged is how much water pressure is actually reaching your patient so you have the wall set on minus 100 or minus 120 or minus 80 centimeters of water pressure but your suction control chamber vent tube is submerged 20 centimeters into water and that will equate into 20 centimeters of water pressure being applied to your patient's pleural space okay 
That's what the addition of the suction chamber is, okay? So you have your collection chamber, your water seal chamber, and now we've added a suction control chamber. And its purpose is simply to regulate and control suction that actually reaches the patient's pleural space. Okay, now let's troubleshoot it. The collection bottle is usually not a problem. If it fills up, change it. Okay, if you have a large pleural effusion or a large empyema and your suction, your collection chamber fills, then you just got to change your system. Okay, but that will not impact your work of breathing like it does in the one bottle system. Okay, so, so, so not much to worry about there. Your water seal chamber, now that you're hooked to suction, you need to understand that any bubbles in your water seal are the ch same as the one bottle or the two bottle system. Okay, bubbles in the water seal is a pneumothorax or an active leak from the lung parenchyma, air being pulled through the system, through the water seal, and it shows up as bubbles in the water seal. Now, the only difference in this and the one and two bottle system is that when you apply it to suction, you can also get bubbles in the water seal if there's a leak in your system, meaning your tubing that's connecting them, okay? Because suction is going to pull any leak or open sections, pull air in, and result in air coming through the water seal, which is going to be um, present as bubbles, okay? Now, <clears throat> excuse me. So, so bubbles in the water seal with the three system is either pneumothorax, active air leak from the lung parenchyma, or a leak in your system, okay? Now, the suction chamber typically operates off of this idea that you want gentle bubbling to be happening, okay? The gentle bubbling is a result of excessive pressure or, or, or pressure from the wall, that is entering into the suction chamber, but then the vent tube that's supposed to be submerged 20 centimeters into water is pulling air in to downregulate to the 20 centimeters of water pressure at your patient, right? So the way you troubleshoot this is in the third or in the suction chamber bottle, if you have excessive bubbling, that's a problem. Okay, it's a problem because excessive bubbling results in quicker evaporation of water. Quicker evaporation of water will lower your amount of water in the suction control chamber, which will decrease the amount of suction being applied to your patient. So your tube that was 20 centimeters submerged is now, after hours of excessive bubbling, is now only 10 centimeters submerged. And that's going to result in only 10 centimeters of water pressure, negative 10 centimeters of water pressure being applied to your patient's pleural space. And that may not be uh, sufficient for proper drainage. Okay, So excessive bubbling is bad. No bubbling means that your suction at the wall is either not high enough, you've either come disconnected, or your suction tubing has become kinked. And now you don't even have sufficient suctioning pressure reaching the third suction chamber, okay? And that will present with no bubbles, okay? Now, gentle bubbling in the suction chamber is what you're looking for. It's normal. It's okay. It should be there, okay? Excessive is bad. No bubbles is bad, okay? No bubbles. You got to increase your suction or find the leak or the, or the kink excessive bubbles, you need to turn your wall regulator down. So maybe you have it set on max negative 180 simmers of water pressure, but you're only delivering negative 20 to the patient. So you're getting a lot of bubbles from the excessive air being pulled in from the vent tube. Okay. Now this is the same with the Pleurovac system. You have the same things. Look at them the next time you're in clinic or the next time you're in a hospital. You have a drainage system, you have a water seal chamber, and you have, I'm sorry, you have a collection chamber, a water seal chamber, and then you have a suction control chamber. It should still be gently bubbling, okay? Now there's some new uh, devices on the market now that are dry seal chest drainage systems, and they operate off of this, what I've seen is an orange accordion. When that accordion gets pulled into the accordion window, then that tells you you have sufficient suction coming from your wall, 
which means whatever you have your setting on, which is typically negative 20 centimeters of water pressure, that's what's being applied to your pleural space. Okay? So that's how you troubleshoot chest drainage systems. Okay? The one bottle, be on the lookout for a rapid collection of excessive drainage. That's going to create an increased workload on your patient. Okay? The two bottle doesn't come with much problems other than the fact that you may need to add suction. Then you go to a three bottle. The three bottle, you got to watch your bubbling in your suction chamber. Adjust it accordingly so that you have gentle bubbling. All three of these, if you have air in the water seal chamber, it's either a pneumo or an active leak in the lung parenchyma. And then the last thing I want to show you is that if you see movement in the chest drainage system, that's normal. That's called tidling. When the diaphragm drops, fluid should get pulled from the water seal chamber, should get pulled towards the patient. And then on exhalation, when intrapleural pressure increases, that fluid should get pushed back away from the patient. Okay? And so that's what I want to tell you. That's what I want you to know. I hope this simplifies it and breaks it down. It's a big topic, an hour and 45 minutes, maybe two hour lecture broken down in about 16 minutes. There's a lot more than this. If you're looking for more than this, then leave me a comment, leave me a question, a concern, whatever it is, I'll address it and we'll go from there. Get involved with your chest drainage systems at the bedside. The more you do, the less likely you'll be to lose this information that you're gaining while you're in school to become a quality respiratory therapist. Go be great, guys.